Hi, it's Jason with DrPreMed.com. I want to talk to you guys about academic prep, in particular for the MCAT, because it's MCAT season. We're into February already, and you want to start studying and preparing for your MCAT. And so I'm getting a lot of questions from students about Jason. I've seen this study tip over here, then I go elsewhere and somebody else is telling me I should do the complete opposite. So what should I actually be doing to prepare for the MCAT? Well, the first thing is there are so many strategies, there's so many tips out there that you don't want to get confused or bogged down trying to figure out which is best for you. What you actually need to do is find a system that works for you and stick to it because you could be studying maybe two or three weeks into your study routine and somebody else says hey I'm doing this and I'm getting a 508 on my MCAT so maybe you should try doing what I'm doing that happens all the times and so then you go okay you know what I'm gonna try what my other friends doing because their score is higher than mine so I'm gonna give that a try so you do that for a little bit you realize you're not making progress and then you're frantically figuring out what you need to do because your test date is coming up you're maybe googling online different MCAT strategies for the last minute then you want to start working in those new strategies that you saw and you just find yourself running in circles and circles where you're just not making enough progress and that's not what you want to do with the MCAT there's already enough stress as is preparing for the MCAT and you don't want to get burdened down by doing things that aren't helping you move the needle forward i.e. getting a higher score on your MCAT so what I think you need to do is Early on in your MCAT prep is the best time to figure out what strategies and techniques that you want to apply. And so give it a try for at least a week or so. I would say minimum a week, probably two weeks or so. See if something's working. If you're not seeing improvement, then maybe it's time to switch over to something else and um, figure out if that's going to help you out. But don't just keep going down the path of doing stuff that's not working for you or constantly thinking that there's going to be this super uh, new system that's never been taught or discussed before and that's going to be the secret to all your MCAT problems. That's just not how it works. And actually what you want to do is some of the most basic things that you could do for your MCAT studying or even studying for your classes are going to give you the most bang for your buck when you're preparing for the MCAT. And I'll tell you right off the bat, a lot of students, they want to feel comfortable with the material before they do questions. I, on the other hand, think that you should have a baseline level of knowledge and then you should jump in and start doing questions immediately because there's only so many times that you can read reread and highlight material in a textbook or one of those review books and then think that you know it. But when you actually get in there and you start doing problems, that's when you're really going to see like, oh wow, the author talked about this topic in this way, but now when I'm doing questions, they expect me to know it at this level of detail or these fine minute points which I didn't think was really important when I was reading are now the whole entire crux of this question set that I'm working on so I really need to know this in better detail so that's why it's always good to do problems when you're studying for the MCAT and plus I like to remind students this is very obvious but people forget it but the MCAT is a test of questions so the best way to prepare for a test of questions is to do questions do as many practice problems as possible and start off, if you're slow, you're not making a lot of progress, start off taking your time doing the questions. But as you get closer and closer to your test date, you need to mimic the testing environment as much as possible. So do your questions time. Do, do, definitely do them timed and things like that because that's going to help you out to get ready for how the actual MCAT is going to present the questions for you. You don't want to do it on tutor mode or anything like that. You just really want to mimic the test as much as possible. But more importantly, after you do questions in preparation for the MCAT, what you also need to do is you need to take time to review those questions. You need to go through each and every question and figure out why you got something right and why you got something wrong. You need to know, okay, Okay, was this a guess that I got it? Was this pure luck? Was this just something I remembered? I'm not going to forget. 
or what else is going on with these questions. And if you remember, let's say there's five questions on an MCAT problem, there's only one correct answer. So that means there's 80% of those questions question answer choices are going to be incorrect so that's 80 percent that you have to learn something of a distractor that a test writer is potentially going to use on any MCAT problem that you're going to see so just keep that in mind and ask yourself okay why would the test writer put this answer choice in, in regards to this question if you can start thinking like that and understanding why test writers are doing things and why they're structuring the questions the, the way they are along with the answer choices it's going to really take your MCAT prep to a different level and really make you a better student when you're um, preparing for the MCAT as well and if you find yourself that you're running out of problems, practice problems, or it's just too expensive for you to use, but purchase more problems to prepare for the MCAT, one thing you can do to really um, get yourself proficient student and a better test taker is you read a section in your MCAT review book and then say, consider yourself a test writer and actively go and make test questions on that topic or subject that you just read over because that's going to really have you think critically because you're going to have to say okay this is the main topic what is something that I can ask a question on and what are going to be distractors I'm going to use what's going to be the best or the most correct answer choice for that and if you're able to do that that's really going to get you and thinking about the material in a total different way and you're not going to just be a passive reader or a passive learner who's just rereading rereading highlighting or whatever you want to do and you're not making enough progress so if you start employing some of these tips and strategies it's really going to boost how you're performing on the MCAT and take your studies and your actual your MCAT practice test results to a whole new level different ball game where you want to be for um, getting into medical school and so that's something that I just want to give out to you guys because I get a lot of questions about the MCAT what are ways to prepare what are strategies and tips and everything like that because I could tell you one strategy some students will love it others will hate it and somebody else is going to say well I went on Google and they said to do this or this other test prep plus says to do this or I've had a tutor who told me to do that or one of my professors said never do that and so you're always going to run into people who are going to have some opinion some type of insight on what they believe is the best way for you to prepare for the MCAT and you know what you need to get in there you need to try different systems different strategies and find out what works for you and then stick with it because there's too many people who get in there and then they just want to jump around and they never make any progress. So I'm telling you, get in there, stick with one strategy or two strategies, whatever, but don't just get bogged down thinking that you're going to find the secret um, strategy to ace the MCAT because it doesn't exist. It really comes down to hard work, doing a lot of preparation, doing a lot of problems, reviewing those problems, and learning from your mistakes and keeping your confidence high as you go through the process of preparing for the MCAT and thinking about what's at stake, why are you actually in this process of studying for the MCAT because you ultimately want to be a doctor, you want to, get, you want to be a physician, you want to take care of people, you want to help people, and you want to be doctor so-and-so, you want to have your white coat, you want to have your stethoscope, and the only way for that to happen is for you to do well in the MCAT because that's the number one fact for deciding whether you get into medical school or not and so take the MCAT very seriously and do what you need to do and if you're struggling and you need some help I'm available I have my MCAT Master Companion course which I made for students because I know a lot of students they get in there they do these commercial prep courses but they don't know how to think like a doctor and then they're struggling with how to translate that into MCAT success and they're not doing they're telling me Jason I'm doing all the reading I'm doing all the problems but the material just isn't sticking my score isn't improving my exam test date is coming up and I don't know what to do I've I've heard so many um, students come to me in the same boat as you so that's why I just recommend 
just take my MCAT Master Companion course. I'll link to it below so you guys are going to have access to that. It's not a free course, but it's not going to break your budget or your wallet. And you have to think about the big picture. If you want to be a doctor or not, what are you willing to do to get there? And what are your peers willing to do to get into medical school? So that's kind of the approach that you need to have in regards to that. And I just want you guys to stay motivated, keep doing well, keep studying, keep hitting the books, keep doing as many practice problems as possible, and you'll be successful in this endeavor of getting into medical school. It might not happen the first time, but if you're persistent and resilient, things can and will happen for you because that's what all medicine is about because it's not an easy journey to get there. And this is Jason with DrPremed.com signing off, and I'll include that link to my MCAT Mastery Command course my MCAT Mastery Companion course for you. Again, Jason with DrPremed.com. Study wisely.